Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa and in this video we're going to talk through how I've completed this kangaroo with colour pencils. If you like this guy and feel like you want to give it a go, I do have this as a tutorial on Patreon. You'll be given the line art, the reference photo, colour list and a real time tutorial for everything that you need to complete this one all by yourself. And if you like this video remember to like and subscribe, leave me a comment below. So let's have a quick look at how I've completed this piece. So starting with the eyes, they do look very black, but I have gone in with a light ultramarine base just to give it a little bit of a blue undertone. And then when you look at the face of this one as well, there are a lot of cool colors. So for this one, I used a lot of the cold gray one to put in the base because they're a sort of bluey undertone. So you want to have a cohesive piece and have the same sort of colors going through. So I've gone through with a lot of cold gray four and the cold gray one, but then in the warmer areas, especially sort of under the chest I've used a lot of the warm greys and the top of the head there's some more warm greys in that section as well. So when you're doing fur like this you want to make sure that you're going in the direction of the fur and the length of the fur. So on the face as you can see the fur goes in many different directions so you want to make sure that you're really studying your reference photo going in the direction of the fur and make sure you're doing the same length furs that you can see on the animal. So on the muzzle, you want to go in with really, really short pencil strokes and you just start with your lighter colors and build up to the darker colors. And then you can go in and glaze over the colors that you see. So in this one, there was a bit of burnt ochre, which is the orange colors, cinnamon, which is the pink colors. And I've also used some beige red for the pink as well. And then in the darker tones, there was the burnt sienna, dark indigo, and I also used a lot of warm grey 5 to get those really dark hairs. And then in the very darkest sections you want to go in with your black. Sometimes you need to go through the piece and put in a whole heap of the sections before you can sort of sit back and evaluate where you need to go darker or where you need to go lighter. So you'll see that I go and complete one part of the piece and then I go back to the older sections and start to add in more because I can see that I need to go darker in certain sections because I've put in newer sections. So when it came to doing the ear, I did go in with my embossing tool and put down some emboss lines. So this just helps to indent the paper to ensure that there's no color going in. And it also gives the effect that there are sort of white hairs going over the dark sections. Ears can be quite tricky because they're very, very fluffy, but you just need to go in and build up your tones really, really lightly and very, very softly to make sure that you give it the soft looking texture. I really love doing the pores on this little guy so I just went in with the base of the warm grey one and then went in with the burnt ochre and then built up the burnt sienna and then the brown colour I used was the burnt umber so I usually go with a walnut brown or burnt sienna but I really liked the burnt umber with this combination because I feel it goes really really well with the burnt ochre. So for this piece, I decided that I didn't want to use a solvent to blend. I just wanted to use my pencils to burnish and blend the paper and the colors down. So this means that I just needed to go through with a couple more layers and really make sure that I had saturated the paper 100%. I did also use some white pencils. So I had a whole wine soft white and you can also use a polychromous white or even just the luminance white is fine to blend down. You can even just blend down with the warm gray one or the cold gray one as well. The paper I'm using is Fabriano and I really feel like this doesn't always need a solvent to blend with unless you're going to go really, really dark because it doesn't always blend the tooth of the paper very well for sort of very black areas. But because this guy is sort of not very dark, I didn't find that I needed to use a blender for this one at all. So I really loved the fur underneath the chest as well. So I just went in with the lighter colors first, then built up the darker colors. And I sort of wanted to make sure that they were blurry areas because you want the focus of the piece to sort of be the face and also those little pores. So you don't really want to draw too much attention to the chest and back of it or the ears or anything because that's not where the focus of the animal is. So this is the final result. I really hope that you like this video. Remember to like and subscribe and check me out on Patreon if you're interested in trying this piece. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.